Good morning from Nest Gardens on the Wirral. An A900 rocket composter in situ in this building behind me. Let's take a look. People ask us how easy is it to load a rocket composter. We supply with every rocket composter 23 litre bins which go in your kitchen and these get filled up with the food waste. They have lockable lids and these get filled up and you lock them and this allows you to carry it to the composter. You access the hatch by a set of stairs. As you can see there's, there's a platform to stand on so you're safe. You lift the lid and then open your bin and then you tip the food waste into the composter. Now at the same time as putting the food waste in you should put the same in volume, so another one of these bins, for every bin of food waste you put into the composter. So it's a ratio of roughly 50-50 food waste to uh, wood chip in the volume. Microbes in the composting process are very much like us humans. They breathe in and then they exhale. And when they exhale, they let out CO2 and water vapor. And that's what happens inside this composter. So what you get is a lot of wet water vapour which has to be extracted by a fan. So on the top of the uh, composter we have a bit of soil pipe which goes by the fan. To adjust the flow we have a, um, a baffle. This is like a butterfly valve and this allows you to open and close to reduce or increase how much air you're pulling through the composter. The wetter the compost, the more air you want pulled out, the drier the compost, the less air you want to be pulled out. The composter is very, very easy to use. We have a simple control panel on the end of the composter. It is all fully automatic. So what happens is when you get it out the box, it will have a setting of two hours. So every two hours, the blades inside the machine will run for about two minutes aerating the compost, allowing moisture, water vapour to, ex to extract and allows oxygen to get into the microbes to allow them to breathe. If you get any faults, you have, we have fuses within the box and if these lights light up, then you, yeah, it tells you you have an issue. When the heaters are on, the light will heat up, so the heaters are on at the moment and you can manually run the motor. You don't need to because the, um, the machine is automatic, but when you run the motor, if I run it forward, you will see the motor on will run. And it's as simple as that. We always recommend that once you've found the recipe of what you're feeding into your composter, so how much the balance of food waste to wood chip, once you've got that balance, you need to record it on a daily basis because it may not be the same person loading the machine each time. So if Joe Bloggs comes and fills the machine, the next person comes and says, I wonder what they put in. So the best thing to do is to write it on the board, something like this, which says how much have been put in of wood chip and food waste and when it was put in. And then you get an accurate record. So if something goes wrong, suddenly your composter is a bit dry or a bit wet, you go, what changed? You can look at your board and tells you exactly right on that day if we didn't put your wood chip in. We're often asked why our composters are on a slant. Part of the composting process is liquid gets let out of the material which is called leachate. It's just a brown liquid, it's nutrient, really high nutrients and it slants one degree to this end. And as you walk around here, goes to the sludge box. Now every one of our compost has got one of these sludge boxes. The newer models have more low nuts. This one's only got one. And all you do is you take this off and then as you pull out, that's your filter, which allows you to clean it and keep the liquid flowing. If this gets blocked, what will happen is your liquid will not come out the composter and then you'll get a very, very wet compost. The composting process is simple, it's been around for millions and millions of years and they're just naturally occurring microbes which do all the work for you. In our vessel there's four zones and there's four temperature probes which are collected by a data logger on the end of the machine. When you first put 
the material in, which is 50% wood chip, 50% uh, food waste. The, the level will be somewhere up about here. And then it will start to decompose and the composting will start to ha happen. And then gradually the level will come down. And in zone two, you'll expect the temperature to be 60, 65 degrees, which is where most of the composting happens. And then the last two zones, as the level drops, your temperatures will go down to 50, 40, maybe 30, depending on what the outside temperature is like, until you get to the end of the composter where you have a discharge chute, which discharges into a bag. And you'd expect to see some lovely compost like here. A composter produces compost after 14 days, but this is not fully matured. What do we mean by that? The microbes that do all the composting for us eat carbon. If you put it straight into your ground, they will eat the roots of your plants. So you don't want that to happen. So what you want is the composting bugs to die. So when you get to the end of here, there will be probably 50% still uh, alive, maybe less. But what you want to happen is you want them to all be dead before you put it onto your land. So what we do is we put them into maturation bays and all this is, is this a time to allow the bugs to die. Now these can be between two and six weeks and you have to turn them every week or so. We know the compost is fully matured by a very, very simple test. The simple test is get a clear zip bag from the kitchen. Put some compost into it and you zip it up. Now what you wait for five minutes if the bag is totally dry, then it's fully matured. If there's any moisture within the bag, it means there's still microbes inside breathing, giving off water vapour, and so the, the composter is not fully matured. People often ask us, how noisy is a the composter? There are two things that make noise in the compost. The fan, which is one, which you can hear now. And the second, is the actual motor which drives the shaft within the compost. If I press the forward button, you will hear this now. So it's a light hum. Nothing more. Our composters are very, very quiet. People ask us, does composting smell? I'm standing in here now. This is a composting process going on, producing compost, they're feeding it every day and there is no smell at all. Maybe a slight fermentation smell, which is just like um, when you open a fresh bag of compost. Nature tells you if you're doing something wrong. So if it's too dry, you will get uh, very, very woody at the end. If it's too wet, it will smell like vinegar and have a real horrible smell to it. If the nitrogen is too high, so you're feeding too much uh, food wasting or garden waste compared to the wood chip it will smell of ammonia. If the oxygen levels are too low you're not turning it enough there's, there's not enough wood chip inside then it will smell of rotten eggs uh, sulfur so as you can see nature tells you when you're doing something wrong. In composting why do we mix food waste or garden waste with wood chip? The reason why I do this is the nitrogen comes from either the food waste or it comes from the green garden grass cuttings and this and the nitrogen allows the bugs to multiply but for the bugs to live they need something to eat and what they need is wood chip just like this and the wood chip this is perfect it needs to be lovely and dry it needs to be stored in vented containers these are vented dolads that we supply and it needs to be up to sort of 70 mil in length and this does three things within the composting process the first thing is like we said it's the food that the bugs eat they eat the carbon from the wood chip the second thing is inside the composting vessel is a shaft with blades and what happens is as the blade rises it hits the wood chips and moves it down the vessel so it gives structure which if, if the compost is inside the vessel is too fine the blades just cut through it and it doesn't move down the vessel. So that's the second thing it does. And the third thing it does is, as you can see, 
there's lots of gaps within this and that is what gives oxygen to the microbes and allows them to breathe. Tidy Planet have been the food waste experts for over 20 years now. If you'd like to find out how we work with businesses like yours, give us a call on 01625 666 798 or head over to our website www.tidyplanetwaste.com